Hey everyone, welcome to The Creek. My name is Jared Miller and I'm the ministry lead here. Here at The Creek, we are passionate and excited about helping you find yourself in God's story. That's what our entire mission here in South Calgary is. And the story of God really begins with maybe the three most famous words in the English language. In the beginning. These, they're so famous that when John began to write his gospel, his account of who Jesus was, which we'll get to in a, in a few weeks, a uh, few, few weeks anyway, he actually starts with those same words. In the beginning was the word. He really wants to make sure that people connect this whole story of God to what he's about to tell them. When the authors of the King James, or the first popular translation of the Bible, opened up to the first words in Genesis, I don't know if they knew or they anticipated or they expected how famous, how infamous those three words would be. In the beginning. This story of God begins with the act of creation. It begins with the act of creation of time itself, that there is a start time to everything that is created in the world. There is a start and an end point to everything. The story of creation, though, is often seen as the linchpin for atheist and theist apologetics to have verbal clashes. It's seen as a, a point of contention for some Christians that if you don't believe that the story of creation is, is described specifically and scientifically word for word as it is in Genesis, that you can't believe the rest of the story. But I'm not here to talk about that. Uh, it's not particularly interesting to me, and I don't know how interesting it is to you. But it's not interesting, least of all, because there are actually two creation stories in the opening pages of Genesis. Genesis 1 and Genesis 2. And these two stories actually form the backbone of everything that's going to come afterwards. The reason that the story of God starts in the beginning is because this creates the rhythm for everything else that's going to happen. Genesis 1, which we'll look at this week, and Genesis 2 next week, tell us two different parts of the same story. They give us two foundations to begin with. One asks the question of why is there something instead of nothing, and two asks the question, why do human beings matter? Why is there something instead of nothing is actually a question that we tackled early on in the, the pandemic phase of this ministry. We ask the question, why is there something instead of nothing? And what does that mean? What does that tell us about the way we continue to believe and seek after meaning? Every single one of us is wired for belief. We're wired for some kind of seeking of, of answers, seeking of patterns, seeking of reasons behind the way things are. And the realities of the scientific method and the realities of our rational discourse and our rational society is that we live in a world that can give us all kinds of perfect, neat and tidy answers for the what, for how things got to be the way they are. Science is so good at describing the met particular methodology and the particular evidence-based processes that things follow to go from A to B to C. But science is woefully inadequate to answer the question of why is there something instead of nothing? because nothing should be the default setting for our universe. Our universe is progressing and moving toward nothingness. Whether that is in the heat death of the universe or the ultimate victory of entropy, the, the, the reality of everything just sort of breaking down, our universe is oriented towards nothingness. And so the simple act of existence begs the question of why begs the question of why are we here today talking about this in the first place? Why is there something instead of nothing? The opening to the story of God gives us a frame to have this conversation. It starts by asking a question that we can't possibly answer, to recognize that we are and are in and of ourselves not rational 
answer machines. We are not made to have all of the answers and all of the confidences in the world. We are not made to know everything. We are made to ask questions. The reality of the first creation story is that it gives space for big questions. For us to gather in this way, for us to sit and be the people of God, considering the story of God and our place in it. And ask, why? We'll move on to the second creation story and what that tells us next week, and we hope that you'll join us for it by subscribing to the channel or downloading our app, both of which are you can do in the link to this video at the bottom. And for now, take care of yourselves, and we can't wait to help you find yourself in God's story next week. Cheers.